Hello and welcome. We are talking about section 5.5 today, additional applications of integration to business and economics. So we're going to attempt to tackle the, basically this, uh, this first learning objective. So we're gonna use integration to compute future and present value of an income flow or income stream. Um, okay, so a definition. And this is gonna take a minute to kind of piece through. So future value of a lump sum investment is something you've probably been doing since uh, your college algebra class or maybe even high school. So if you just invest uh, one fixed amount of money and let it sit for a while, then you might remember that kind of PERT formula. Um, principal times e to the rt. So this is a similar kind of motivation, but instead of just a lump sum investment, you, it's an annuity. You're constantly making additions to this amount. And the way we're keeping track of that is basically with this f of t function. And so this f of t is your income stream, and this represents the rate. And it's really important that we remember this is a rate at which you're adding money to this account. But it's even better than that because while you're adding this money to the account, it's also being invested. And so the money as it goes in gets to sit in this account for some fixed amount of time. And the total length of time is T. So this is the, we might call this the term of the investment. Um, and the only catch there is that, for instance, if you have a, a 10 year term, and the money that you invest at the very beginning is gonna be in there for the entire 10 years. It's gonna accrue 10 years worth of interest, capital T years of interest um, at an interest rate of R. Um, the only problem then is that in order to track the rest of that money, for instance, the money that's put in at the moment, you know, New Year's Day strikes after five years. Well, okay, if, if, if you're five years into the investment, that portion of this F of T is only gonna be invested for the remaining five years of that time so we're not it's not just e to the r little t it's actually the length of the investment minus wherever it got invested at the first point so this is basically time remaining on the little uh i'm gonna say teeth <laughs> t t h as in the whatever spot in line this uh, uh comes into during the the investment so just to try to tackle this equal sign a little bit, because the, the truth is we generally will try to use the right side of this equal sign. Um, maybe we'll just note that the main difference here is that this term is a factor out in front and there's no factor out in front of this integral. But if you remember your uh, rules of exponents, and I'll kind of break this out down here, this would look like, uh, sorry, e to the r capital T and then e to the negative r little t. Um, well, this blue encircled thing doesn't have any of the variable in it. It doesn't have any lowercase t there. So e r capital T, this is a constant. I mean, it's a fancy looking constant, but it's still a constant. And it's being multiplied to everything inside, so it can get pulled to the outside of this integral, and there it shall sit. Um, what that means is that the leftover integral is a little bit easier to manage. You have an e to the negative rt, and then whatever this income stream function looks like. And then you're integrating this because you're adding up all the little pieces of investment, all the, the continuously coming in money that gets invested for however much time remains. So I like showing this initial formula because this is, this is sort of where it comes from, but the truth is it's easier to compute in general from the right side. Um, the downside here is it's harder to remember where future value actually comes from uh, looking at this right side. Okay, so we'll, we'll try a, a real example. So uh, Jeremiah's grandmother is going to put money continuously. It really does have to be continuous, so this is a little bit weird in that we're imagining money is always being added. Um, and it, this happens at a rate of $10,000 per year. Again, this rate thing is going to be really important to us uh, because this is um, the f of t, the income stream, is itself a rate. So when you see rate, I don't want to freak out too much but because I'm going to be thinking, okay, $10,000 per year, this is a fixed value. This is actually going to be telling me that f of t is 10000 because f of t is already a rate. We've got an interest rate, which looks a lot like r. 
Um, okay, there's something about GPA. Uh, okay, so if he's able to do this for eight years, then, uh, so that's gonna take him from high school and into college, then how much will the value of the trust be at the end? So when I see eight years, I'm gonna be thinking capital T, because that's the term of the investment. So the, the, the kind of key words here are that I'm looking for the value of this annuity, the value of this investment, some length of time down the road. And that's, that's what's gonna tell me that future value is what we're going for. And since it's not a lump sum investment, it's not just money that's, that's one time stuck in an account and just let sit and gain interest, then we have this more complicated situation. So money accrues at a rate of $10,000 per year and it's invested at the same time. Uh, so here's our future value formula. Again, we're using that right side of the formula that we, that we looked at um, because it's easier to compute with. But you'll notice we have already plugged in uh, our f of t. Um, we're going to put in a value for capital T here and for uh, r. So um, it did say r was 3%, so we're going to have uh, an exponent of 0.03. We do want to write it as a decimal, not as a percent. The term of the investment was 10, so that, or sorry, it's 8 is going in for all of our big t's and then filling in the rest. So the only thing that should be left over here is e, which is a constant anyway, um, and then our lowercase t's, which are the variables that represent the, the um, time at which this money is invested. But this is an integral that we're, we're pretty capable of doing. We've got, uh, it looks like e to the kt. There is a constant, but that's fine. We can, constant multiples can get pulled out. So we should feel pretty good about using our nice little uh, one over k e to the kt formula for this. So there's our integral, we're evaluating it from zero to eight. Uh, we plug in those values. Again, this constant just sitting on the front. I think I pulled out the negative 0.03 as well, just so it wouldn't have to be part of this plugging stuff in business. But you know, the usual deal, fundamental theorem of calculus, we plug in eight, we plug in zero, we take the difference and get some approximate value. <clears throat> okay, so this was all in dollars. So our conclusion is that the fund is worth about 90 grand. Okay, not bad. Uh, especially when you think, okay, so it's she, the grandmother invested for over eight years at a rate of ten thousand dollars per year. So eight times ten thousand is eighty thousand dollars that she put in. Another ten thousand came from interest. Okay, so the other side of this is present value, and this is a little bit harder to think about, but it's actually easier to compute. So this is, I don't know weird trade-offs. So the present value of an income stream is what would I what would I need to uh, uh, what would I need to deposit into an account regularly in order to have some uh, uh, amount of money at the end of this basically um, and the, the setup for this is um, essentially using the future value formula so it uses this future value so essentially what we want is, if I did a lump sum investment, so I just had a fixed amount of money right now, how would I get that to be the same as the future value? Um, this is actually what, what happens when you uh, get a mortgage. It's usually not continuously compounded, but your uh, a, simple, a simple interest amortized loan works this way as well, basically. So the, the numbers are different. But So lump sum would look like our, our handy dandy PERT formula the future value formula looks like, and again, I'll use the one that's easier to compute. So where the E to the R big T is pulled out in front. We've got our income stream. We've got our investment uh, uh, sort of factor there. And then the thing that happens here that's most exciting is um, the capital P is basically this present value. So here is, I guess I could have written PV, but um, that's the thing we're trying to figure out. Essentially, how much would I have to invest right now to match the value of this future income stream, if we assuming investing both of these things. But you'll notice both sides have a factor of E to the big R T, or sorry, E to the R big T. And so what we're left with is that the present value is equal to essentially this leftover piece. So although it's a harder concept, present value has an easier way to, an easier computation strategy. It's just the future value computation, but without this e to the rt out in front. 
So we'll do a quick one just for comparison. Uh, if we, instead of investing this at a continuous rate, um, so we're looking back at this previous example. So instead of putting in $10,000 a year for eight years, this uh, kid's grandma could have said, okay, well, how much money would I need to put into an account right now and have it be the same value as if I had invested at $10,000 per year for eight years? And so this, this exact uh, value is what we would call a present value. How much money you'd have to put in an account right now to match the value of an annuity over the same period of time at the same interest rate. So present value looks like this and just you know point out our usual stuff. So here's our capital T, here's R, and I, I guess it's not the negative piece that's built into the formula. This was F of T, so these are all the same, the kind of familiar things we were working with before. It's actually the same integral that we did for the future value too, so it ought to look very similar with uh, integral of e to the kt looking like 1 over k times e to the kt. And going through the same kinds of uh, process here, we plug in our 8, plug in our 0, and get about 71 grand. So I guess the thing to consider here is what this says is if she had put $71,000 in a bank account right at the beginning and then let it sit for eight years until Jeremiah was done with college, that would have the same $91,000 value that the annuity that she paid in example one did. So in other words, she paid $10,000 a year in order to get $90,000 at the end, or she pays $71,000 at the beginning and lets it sit for eight years. That has the same result, the same $91,000. So it takes a little bit to wrap our brain around this. Later on in this uh, section, we're going to do another present value computation with uh, using a different strategy.